Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 33 in the legendary, the new, the improved series of Arduino tutorials. This is going to be a good one. This is going to be a more complicated project. So I need you to pour yourself a doubly strong, doubly tall cup of ice cold coffee. And I need you to get out your Arduino eLego Super Starter Kit. If you don't have one, check out the description below for a link. 35 bucks, you get a whole lot of components. And then I need you to get out your high-tech servos, which hopefully you ordered because I warned you to last time. If you don't have the high-tech servos, you can go to the link below and the description and you can get those. So what are we going to do today? Let me get out of your way. Okay, I'll get a little further out of your way today because we got a lot of stuff going on. What we're going to do is <clears throat> we are going to control two servos from the joystick. So what you need for this project is you need your breadboard. You need the ribbon cable from the eLego kit. You need your Arduino. You need the joystick. You need the button for the joystick, the buzzer, and you need your two high-tech uh, servos. Again, the servos that come with these little kits uh, allow you to learn on them, but they're not real good ones. They're kind of jittery and don't work very well. Hey, I'm going to give you another tip on a servo. When you have a servo, never sit and turn it like a fidget toy. It is not a fidget toy. If you sit and spin it from the horn or spin it from the little output shaft, you will damage it. So don't sit and fiddle with them. They are precision instruments, so make sure that you take care of your equipment. All right, we are going to jump right in and get started on this thing. So the goal is, is that with the joystick, if I move it left and right, it will control this servo, and if I move it up and down, it will control this servo, and then we are going to mount this servo on top of this servo as such so that we can switch this way or we can switch this way, and then we would have a super laser pointer at that, at that point. I will simulate my laser with this blue ruler, because it's going to be kind of hard for you to actually see the dot where a real laser would be pointing. So you remember in Lesson 32, we showed you how to hook the joystick up. So let's get started with that. And if hopefully you already left your joystick hooked up and you could skip a little bit of this video. But for those of you tuning in from the start, we get our ribbon cable and we're going to put it this way. And we're going to put the black wire to ground. We are going to put the white wire to the 5 volts. We are going to put the gray wire to the VRX, which is that X potentiometer. We are going to put the purple wire to VRY, which is the Y potentiometer on the joystick. And then the blue is going to go to SW, the switch. All right, so that is hooked up. Now we're going to hook this to the Arduino. And we have a little problem, OK? The, uh, the little problem that we have is that we've got a lot of other stuff to hook up. And so what we need to do in this particular case is, I'm trying to think of the best way to arrange this, perhaps like this. We have a lot of grounds that we're going to need, and we have a five, lot of 5 volts that we're going to need. And so I'm going to create a rail. I'm going to connect to 5 volts on the Arduino. Yes, good. 5 volts on the Arduino. And I'm going to come over and I'm going to connect it to the second row of the breadboard. Now that entire row 2 becomes a 5 volt rail that we can go grab things off of when we need. And similarly, if I can find a suitably short black wire like this one, we're going to come from ground and we are going to create a ground rail in row 1. OK, so row one is hooked to ground, and row two on the breadboard is hooked to the most excellent. Uh, I lost my train of thought. The row two, is, row two is 5 volts. Row one is the ground. All right, 
Now we have to hook this up, and this is going to start being a little bit more of a challenge because we got to get all the wires where we want them. So I am going to come in, and the black one, the first one was ground, so I will put that in. Yeah, you know what? I think, though, what I am going to do, I'm just thinking about how to get all these wires connected. I... Uh, this will work. Okay, so so the black wire goes to row one, which is ground. If I can get it to go in, right? Black wire into row one, then white wire into row two, which is the five volts. And now I have to go over to a zero, which was a little bit what I was afraid of, but I can get that. So the gray wire is going to be that potentiometer on the X, which goes into A0. And then the next wire, which is purple, is going to go into A1. And so let's look at this to make sure that you can follow. OK. Do you see how we have the gray in A0 and the purple in A1? So that's all hooked up. And now I just have one more thing to hook up on the joystick. And that is the blue wire going to pin 2. Okay, the blue wire going to pin two. And then these wires are not going to be used. So I think I'm kind of hooked up pretty good there. But guys, this is so such a kind of you know intense project. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on over here to the code, and this is the code that we developed. Uh, better view, better view here. This is the code that we developed in uh, lesson number 32, which I believe was our pre previous lesson. Yes, lesson number 32. And if you go to w, you can go to the YouTube channel and go to the previous lesson, which was lesson number 32, and you can see how we developed this code to control the joystick. Or you can go to toptechboy.com. You can go to our new Arduino lessons, the new series. You can go to 32 and you can copy and paste this code. Really, it's not good to copy and paste. It's really not a good idea to copy and paste, but at least you can get caught up with where I am. Since I'm not developing this, let me go ahead and explain it. Remember XPIN, we connected to, remember XPIN, we connected to A0. YPIN, we connected to A1. The S pin, the switch pin, we connected to two. That's just what we just did down here, right? Just did it down here. Uh, then uh, X val is what we're reading from that X potentiometer. Y value is what we read from the Y potentiometer. S val is the value of the switch when we do the digital read on the switch. If this is going too fast for you, I'm sorry. Go back to the earlier lesson and I explain it in detail. We set up our pin modes for X pin, Y pin, and S pin. And then in order to be able to do this digital read with a built-in power supply and a pull-up resistor, again, go back to the earlier lesson if you don't understand this, digital write S pin high. Even though it's an input, we make it high. Then we read the X valve from X pin, read the Y valve from Y pin, read the S valve from S pin, and then we delay by DT so it doesn't go too fast, and then we print it all out. So let's download this. Okay, and since this was earlier developed code, it works. Now let's come over and let's get our joystick where you can see it. Let's put the handy little knob on it. It's kind of a square hole, so you've got to get it just right. Okay, so you can see this. I'm going to go left, and I expect X to go down. Okay, let me make sure I have my serial monitor open. Where is that crazy serial monitor? Okay, there it is. All right, now it's live. So as I move the joystick left, look at that. X goes down all the way to zero, back to the up position. I'm going to move the joystick right, and look at that. It goes to 1023. I'm going to move the joystick up, and Y this time goes to zero. Y comes back to the neutral, and then Y goes to 1023. So this is working as expected. If I move it left, it goes to zero. Right, it goes to 1023 on X. And then Y changes when I move it this way. If I press it forward, it goes to zero as such. 
If I pull it back, it goes to 1023, and it is all smooth in between, all smooth in between. Then the button push. If I hit the button, it goes to zero. If I let the button out, it goes to one. Press the knob down, zero, one. This is working properly. Okay, so I guess next up, we need to connect these darn servos. Okay, so we've got the joystick part of the project working. Let's hook up these servos. These are a little different uh, color code than the ones that came with the uh, than the ones that came with the e Lego kit. But you can imagine here, it's kind of like you might imagine. The red pin goes to power, so I will go red to my rail, which is row two, right? I would run out of power things if I didn't make this rail. So red goes to row two, which is my power rail. And then I am going to take the black, the black wire, plug in, plug in black. Ah, these things are darn hard to get in today. The black is going to go to row one, which is my ground. Okay, row one goes to ground. I mean, the black goes to row one, row one is ground. And now the yellow is my control. The yellow is my control. So I need to move this bad boy over here and I am going to make it pin 10 just because I can. I don't know for sure, but it might be smart to use a squiggly for a servo. I don't know that for sure, but it might be you need to use a squiggly for a servo on the digital pin. Okay, let's do similarly with this one. This time the red is power. I will use a white wire. Wouldn't it be neat if I had all the right colors that I could color code, but I am running out of wires here because we have, are hooking up a lot of stuff. So on the second servo, red has a white wire and is going similarly to row two on the breadboard, which is power. Now I will take I don't, I do have a black wire. I love using the right color wire. So black goes to black on the servo. Black wire goes in. And then that goes to row one, which is ground. And now I have a control. I will use a green wire to connect to the yellow for control. And then that is going to go to pin nine on the Arduino. Pin nine on the Arduino. Is this not a horrible mess? Very quickly, you will see why people use PC boards rather than breadboards, because you can see that these wires are going every which way crazy. All right, but with a little luck, that might work. Let me think. Okay, you know what we got to do now? We got to do a little math before we do any coding because we've got to get the servos working correctly with the potentiometers on the joystick. And if you tuned into maybe lesson 12, I went kind of went through this somewhere back there on no, it was it was an earlier, I mean it was a later lesson where we were talking about about the servos, and the servos were probably somewhere around uh, lesson 30. Okay, we talked about how, how to do this, but what you can see is, is that what are the values that we are going to have that we read from the potentiometer? We can read from 0 to 10, 23. We can read from 0 to 1023. That's like your x value because that's what you read. And you want to turn that into a y value. And so this is like your read value. That's what you read from the potentiometer. And then what you want here is a write value, what you're going to write to the servo. So you read from the potentiometer on the joystick and then you're going to write to the servo. So if you have a zero, what angle do you want 
the uh, servo to be at. If you read zero from the potentiometer, you want the servo to be at zero. If you read 1023 from the potentiometer, you want the servo to be at 180, at 180. So now we have two points. So we can make a line, we get the equation of that line, and when we get the equation of the line, then we can program it so that as we smoothly move the joystick, the servo smoothly moves. And man, I know you guys hate math, but if you would just learn how to do that, somewhere out there in the world, we need some people that know how to do math. And so what is this? This is the x value, which we call what? Read value. And it goes from 0 to, so let's say this is 250, 500, this is 750, and this is 1,000, and then 1023 would just be a little bit past that. And then this is going to go from 0 to 180. All right, so what's one point that we have? We have the point 0, 0. What's the other point we have? We have the point 1023, 180. So 1023 up here to 180. And now we have a line. We have a line. Boom, like that. I need an equation for that line. To get the equation for the line, what's the first thing I need? I need slope. M in math class is what? It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But we're not doing y's and x's. We have what? We have right value 2, right value 2 minus right value 1 over what? x is read value. Read value 2 minus read value 1. All right. Now, what does that become? Well, right value 2 is what? 180 and then minus right value 1, which is 0. So I have 180 minus 0 over the uh, read value 2 minus read value 1. Read value 2 minus read value 1 is 1023 minus 0. Isn't life wonderful when you go through the origin and you have a nice easy slope like that? Okay, now how do we find the equation of the line? Well, with the point slope form of the equation, we have, I mean, yeah, the point slope y2 minus y is equal to m, ding, ding, we have m onto with parentheses x minus x1. But we're not using y, so we're going to rewrite this with our variables. This is going to be right value 2, or right value, y, mm, this is y, I wrote this wrong, y minus y1, I'm sorry. Okay, this is y minus y1 is m onto x minus x1. So this becomes right value minus right value 1 is equal to m onto read value minus read value 1. All right, so this is right value, where you can see it, right value minus right value 1. Well, what was right value 1? It was 0. That's kind of nice. Is equal to what? M, do I have M? Yes, it's 180 over 1023, which we just calculated, times what? Read value minus read value 1. So that's read value minus what's read value 1, 0. Life is so easy when your line goes through the origin. So now we have an equation. Right value is equal to 180 divided by 1023 times read value. And this is the equation that we need to program into the Arduino. So we're going to look at the potentiometer and we're going to read a read value. 
we're going to multiply it by 180 divide by 1023 and then we get the right value and so let's just think if I read 1023 that would be 1023 divided by 1023 is 1 times 180 I would write a 180 and boom the servo would move just where I wanted now understand I'm going to need to do this for the X servo and I'm going to need to do it for the uh, X potentiometer and then the Y servo and the Y potentiometer so I'll have to program this equation twice with slightly different variables but I think with that most excellent little math lesson you can figure it out and this is getting to be a scary tangled mess it will be amazing if this thing actually works all right I'm gonna take another shot of coffee Okay, the good news is we have the potentiometer. This is just too ugly that I cannot even operate this way. All right, good news is we have the potentiometer already working. I mean, the joystick already working, the two potentiometers on the joystick already working. So now we begin to code. We have added, oh, one more thing, one more thing circuit wise. If it wasn't complicated enough, if it wasn't complicated enough, we are going to add this buzzer. This is the active buzzer, and the active buzzer is going to plug into the breadboard. I'm going to take one pin of the active buzzer, the positive one on the buzzer. Make sure that you notice that there's a, a plus by one of the pins, and that does matter. And I'm going to take that to pin 7. And then I need my most trusty ground. I am desperately looking for a black wire, but don't have one. So I will use a blue wire and I will take that from the other lead of the buzzer. And I will hook that to row one, which will be my ground. All right. And I uh, cannot help it. I'm going to come over here and plug the buzzer in and just make sure it works. A little auditory excitement here. Uh, there it goes. Okay, very good. I can make it buzz, but now I go back to pin 7. All right, just a little excitement there. Shake things up a little bit. Throw the buzzer on with just a positive voltage. And I just want to make sure that I did, in fact, have the right buzzer. The buzzer with the black tape on the bottom in the eLego kit is an active buzzer, which means you just put a voltage on it and it works. All right, we have added some things here. And so we have got to do some more pin modes up here and add some more pins. So we now have an int, and I will call it <coughs> x uh, servo pin. And what was my x servo pin? That is going to be that one. And so it's this servo here and that servo is indeed plugged into pin 9. Okay, is it pin 9? It is pin 9. Man, on this part, this is where you've got to really be careful. It's pin 9. Okay, that's pin 9. And now I also have the Y servo pin. And that we did, in fact, that's this one. We did, in fact, put that on pin 10. And those are both squigglies, just in case that matters. <clears throat> 9 and 10. Very good. Very good. All right. And then also, we're going to have an int. And we are going to have a buzz pin. And buzz pin was equal to 7. Buzz pin was 7. I believe those are the new pins that we did. So with new pins comes new. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I don't want to start this video over. So let me just switch over here now and let me just show you what I did real quick here. You can see that I had these pins already from our earlier work. And then I put in or I had uh, these pins from the earlier work. And I put in this X servo pin equal 9, Y servo pin equal 10, buzz pin is equal to 7. And then we will need to do pin modes. But before we do pin modes, I need to think, do we need any other variables? Yes, we do need a variable. We need 
right, we need to calculate an angle, which we call the right value, right value for servo x. And we're going to calculate that. And then I need an int. And I need a right value for servo y. All right. That gets back to this calculation that we did, right? This calculation where I need to calculate the right voltage using this. Well, the thing is, I'm going to have a right, I'm going to have a right value for the x servo and a right value for the y servo. So I need two variables there. Now, uh, the buzzer, I do indeed think, does not need anything. And we already have xval that we are reading off of the x potentiometer. And we have yval that we are, cal that we are calculating from, or we read yval from the y potentiometer, which is y pin. And then we calculate right value y. We read xval from x pin, and then we calculate right value x. Does that make sense? Hopefully you're seeing kind of what I'm thinking. All right, we need to do some pin modes. We need pin mode. And what did we add? We added, uh, we added xs pin for x servo pin. xs for x servo pin is an output we're writing to it pin mode, and then it was y servo pin, where the y servo is hooked to. We're going to control that. That is going to be an output. And then we have pin mode. And then I do believe we called it buzz pin. Buzz pin. And that is going to be an output. I think that's good. All right. So now we come down here and we read xval, right? We read xval. Well, I don't want xval. What is it that I really want? I want the right value, right? I want the right value. And which right value do I want? I want right value for x. Is that what I call it? Right value for x. Yes. And that's equal to, because of our most excellent equation, it's equal to 180 divided by 1023. It is 180 <coughs> divided by 1023. And because you want to force this to be floating point math, make sure that you put your periods in. One of the biggest errors I see is if you don't put your periods in, it is going to make that integer math and we'll round to zero. I'm going to put parentheses just because I'm a math teacher and always like parentheses. And now I'm going to times it by what? The read value. The read value. Well, what is the read value? Well, it's x val that we just read. OK. So now I need to do the same thing with y val. And so uh, I really want the right value for y, this is the angle that we are going to send to the uh, servo. And that, again, is going to be equal to 180 point divided by 1023 point. And I will use my parentheses. All right. And now this time, it is times what? Times y val. And so this is the angle, this is the angle that we are going to send to the Y servo. So now as I move the joystick, as I move the joystick, X val is going to change and that's going to calculate a right value in X. And then as I change the potentiometer this way, that is going to change Y val. And then that is going to allow me to calculate a right value for the Y servo. OK, I hope you understand. This is very logical, but I hope you're following with what I am saying. So now I have and then I still read this S val. <coughs> now I have I in fact have everything that I need in order to what? Send values to those servos. All right. But if I'm going to use those servos, I am going to have to turn the servos on and do all the nonsense associated with the servos, which we have to remember. We have to remember this, that uh, 
what we want to do. And let me just get a little cheat sheet here. I have a, I don't remember all the commands all the time right off the top of my head. And so I am going to see if I can uh, get this right here. Okay, this will have the commands that I need just so that I don't mess you up. All right, so if we're going to use the servo, we have to lo load the servo library. Do you remember how we do that? We hit pound and we say uh, include, saying to load a library. Which library do we want? Capital S-E-R-V-O dot H. That is the library. Now we have a library. All right so we can give servo commands. The other thing that we have to do is we have to create an object, right? We have to create an object. And so we're going to use the servo command from the servo library and then we're going to create the, the, the object. And so what am I going to call it? I'm going to call my object x servo. Okay, x servo. What do I also need? Do I have one servo? No, I have two servos. So the other one is going to be what? Y servo. Right. So now I have two servo objects. All right. Now Arduino in my, uh, oh, I don't want those. I'm sorry. I put those in the wrong place. So get that nonsense. Cut it. All right. That goes at the very, very top of the code. I thought I was at the top, but I wasn't. So I'll control V, paste it. So this goes. So now I have X servo and I have Y servo. Now I want to go down to the void setup. <clears throat> and what I need to do there is I need to tell Arduino where those two servos are attached. And I do that in the void setup. And what do I have? I have X servo. And X servo is connected to pin 10, which is my, uh, I'm sorry, X servo, X servo, attach, and where do I attach it? To X pin. And let me make sure that that is the right pin. XS pin, that is the servo pin. So I'm attaching the X ser servo to the X servo pin as such. What else do I need to do? I need to connect Y servo that I just created dot attach. And where did I attach it? Y servo pin, like that. All right, now I've loaded the library. I've created the two servo objects. I've told Arduino where to attach them. And now I do believe that I am ready to write these values that I created. And what values did I create? I created, I'm going to do an x servo.write. And what am I going to write to x servo? Well, I'm going to write to x servo the right value x, which I just calculated. So that's the number between 0 and 180. Now I need to y servo dot write. I need to y servo write y or write value y. And I need to end with semicolons. So let's think about what we are doing here in case you have gotten lost. I have a joystick. Okay, I have a joystick. The joystick has two potentiometers. What I read from those two potentiometers, first I read XVAL and then I read YVAL. XVAL is moving it like this, YVAL is moving like, like that. I have XVAL and YVAL. Now I need a number between 0 and 180 to write to the servos. I calculate that. The right value of X is based on XVAL, and that is the value that is going to be written to the X servo. Similarly, I calculate the Y right value, right value Y, and I write that to the Y servo. 
this will be a miracle if we get this working okay we're going to take a shot of coffee before trying to download this help me by holding your breath and then oh why does it not like y val ah simple you forgot to put the semicolon there so put the semicolon oh Oh, you forgot to put the semicolon there. All right. And some of you are not holding your breath. Everyone hold your breath this time. And it downloaded. Okay. So we downloaded it. All right, man. And this time we're going to go back up to full view here like this. And I am going to get my joystick where you can see it with the servos. Now, it would be a miracle if this actually works, but I am going to, man, this is hard to get a pretty view, but man, we're beyond, we're way beyond trying to be pretty at this point. We are way beyond trying to be pretty at this point. So we're going to watch this one and let me get a little piece of Pookie. If you don't have Pookie, please get some. It is the duct tape of the electronics world. And so... I'm going to make a little pooky arrow here like that so you can make sure that you see that. Now when I go left and right I expect that to move. Oh man, look at that. That one. Boom! Did you see that? Huh? Did you see that? Watch that. Watch, I can move it nice and ever so gently. Look at that. You see, that is because we do math. And because we do math, we can make this thing work beautifully and perfectly. Do you see how smoothly we can move it? That's because the math really works. Now look at this other one. What do we expect if I move it up and down? We expect the other servo to move. Look at that to the left and to the right, getting position. Now I can move them by going at the 45s. I, ooh, we had a collision. Battle of the servos. Boom. Look at that. We can go that way, and they'll go the same direction. This way, they'll go the same. Going the other way, we can make them go opposite. Man, do you see this? Do you see this? Yes, we have this thing working. All right, now what do we do, though? We wanted to make a pointer. We wanted to make a laser pointer kind of thing. And so I'm going to get a little more Pookie. Be sure and buy this Pookie. It is amazing stuff. I don't even know what it's really called, but it's something you use in ham radios. It's like you can, if you have outdoor connectors, you can put this stuff on it, and it will, like, seal your connectors against the apocalypse if you if you need that. So this we're going to put there and then this we are going to put on top of it like that, like such. All right. Now here we're going to get this nonsense out of the way. Okay. And then what am I going to get another little piece of pookie? Okay. Another little piece of pookie. And I am going to stick my trusty blue ruler. You know, I had a student, a math student, and she had this beautiful ruler, and I was always admiring her ruler. And I told her, you know, that is just a lovely ruler. And you know what she did? She went and got me one. Even though it is a freebie that somebody gave her, I thought it was very nice that she actually went and got me a pretty six-inch clear blue ruler. Okay, so now this is our ray gun, our laser of death. Okay, and let's see. Let's see if we can actually... Man, this is ugly, isn't it? Let's see if I can go to a different view. Let's see if I can have a different view. Boom. Do you see that? It is aiming right at you. And then here's the joystick, and I'm going to go left and right. And look at that. You see, I'm pointing it very carefully left and right. Look at that. You know what I see? I see right off the bat that I need to put another piece of paper under here. And do you see how the base is not ah, the base is not stable? You see that? Answer is answer is more pookie. So I'm going to try to secure 
the bottom servo to the table, or at least the piece of paper on the table with more hooky. And I hope that works. Okay, and when that doesn't work, see the problem is more tape. Okay, and now if I just put the pookie here, maybe that'll hold. Okay, now here is the joystick. We go left. Our laser of death aims left. If we go right, our laser of death aims right. And don't pull on the wires there. Okay, do you see that if I move it smoothly, it moves smoothly. Now let's look. We can go down. We can go up. We can knock it over if we're not careful. Okay, boom! Guys, this really moves incredibly smoothly. You can just see that I need to do a little of my Fusion 360 work, design some of the mechanical connectors, and then print it out on the 3D printer. And you could have just like a super cool little laser game where you were pointing a laser using this. And if this was, it's electrically extremely accurate. The position is very, very accurate. But mechanically, you can see that this is just kind of kludged together. So it's not like a real, uh, a real strong, uh, uh, a real strong setup. But we forgot one more thing that we needed to do. And that was, oh, yes. We forgot our friend the buzzer. I almost forgot. So I need to come over here. And then as I am doing all of this nonsense, I need to come in and then say if. And then what was that silly buzzer pin? That silly buzzer pin was buzz pin. No, the value that I read. Did I ever read from that? Let me see. I don't think I've set up my buzz pin. Yeah, I put buzz pin high digital right uh, S pin. I need to digital right buzz pin high here. No, 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 no. Okay, switch pin. All right, 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 guys. Okay, this is it. Buzz pin goes to the buzzer. All right, ah, you're not even seeing. I'm sitting here talking like an idiot. I apologize when I do that, but I don't want to go back and start all the way over. Okay, buzz pin is what we're going to write to. That's where the buzzer is hooked to. It's S pin that we read from. Okay, and then we read it here. S val is digital read of S pin. Now I know if the if the pin is is if, if the switch is down or not remember here like watch on this over here watch as i'm going uh on these values that i'm printing x val y value and switch state remember that if i pull if i press this button switch state goes to zero and that is this s val here that i am reading so then what i need to say is I need to say if <clears throat> sval equal equal what? If sval equal equal zero, then what I want to do is I want to digital digital right buzz pin high like that all right and then i think what i would do is instead of an if i would do a while i would say while mm, no i'm going to do an if i'm going to say if little if lift if, if s val 
equal equals zero, then what do I do? I'm going to say digital right buzz pin high. Okay, and then else if it's not that, then I will do what? I will did digital right buzz pin low. So as long as I'm holding that pin, that switch down, it should buzz on us, I think. Let's see if we can even download this. All right, looks like we downloaded it. Okay, and it looks like I'm getting values. And so now let's see, I'm going to switch back to our dramatic view here where it looks like this crazy thing is about to fall over. More mechanical support. Call in reinforcements. Where is my pookie? All right. Oh, do you see that poor thing? Okay. So we are going to put something here, like a remote control, and then we're going to put something here, like a calculator, and try to hold that. Okay. Now I'm going to try to point it right at you using my controls. Point it right at you. And then I'm going to point it right at you. And then I'm going to fire. Fire. You see that? Fire. Boom. I got you. Oh, someone up high. Incoming. Boom. Oh, down low. Boom. Left. Right. Up. Boom. Boom, and it's a mechanical disaster, but it is a electrical programming Arduino success. Okay, so you guys see, this is really, uh, it was kind of fun to do, but this was really a very, uh, a very complicated project, right? It really was very complicated. I have got to get a reasonable view here, okay? This was a really complicated project because we had an input device from a joystick, and then we controlled two separate devices, an X servo and a Y servo. And then we even use the button on the servo to control the buzzer. And so I think that that was pretty darn exciting. Okay. I have over 100,000 subscribers and I would be surprised if I have had a single viewer make it all the way to the end of this video. So to show me that you have made it to the end of the video, I want you to type in the secret word. The secret word for today, wait for it, the secret word for today is Bosco. Okay, this is Bosco. He is my guard in Africa. Don't let the trim physique and the overcoat fool you. He is a very, very good guard. You do not mess with him. And it looks kind of funny. It looks like tropical and this guy's wearing a coat. Well, the funny thing in Africa, like in the tropics where uh, where my home is, the temperature year-round goes from like 68 to 78. That's like the entire temperature range. Like here in Texas, we'll go from 0 to 110. Okay, from 0 to 110 is our dynamic range. The dynamic range there is 68 to 78. So when it's 68, to them, that's like zero here, and they'd like pull out the heavy parkas and the coats and the blankets, and then 78 is just like dying hot. Okay, but I digress. Show me that you're actually watching this by typing Bosco in, just Bosco, and then I'll know, ah, oh, that guy made it to the end. Then the people that don't make it to the end, they're wondering why people are typing Bosco. But I really, to be honest with you, wonder if anybody is going to make it to the end of this video because it was a lot of stuff that we did. It was kind of a long one. Okay, Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. Think about giving us a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to the channel. Think about sharing this with other people. I will talk to you guys later.